Hey, what's going on everybody? So today we're gonna to be taking a look at everything new here in macOS 12 Monterey. So this is a whole lot of new stuff here. So I'm gonna to try to cover literally everything that I possibly can. So let's go ahead and jump right into this. All right, so there are a lot of features that we saw in iOS 15. And one of those is FaceTime. So FaceTime, you now have the ability to use SharePlay so you can share your screen, music, TV shows, movies, all that kind of stuff with others while you're on a FaceTime call. I'm sure you've heard what SharePlay is many a times now, but it is now available here on the Mac. You also get some of the other FaceTime features now like spatial audio, the wide spectrum mode, grid view, voice isolation mode. And then of course you now have the ability to set up a FaceTime call and have a link for others to join the call even if they are not on an Apple device. So that is pretty cool now. So we now have all those FaceTime changes. And also we now have the message changes as well. So you have the shared with you thing. So if somebody shares a photo or a news article or something like that, it will appear in the corresponding app. So somebody sends you to a link to a website, you go into Safari and you'll see that under your shared with you section. So you now have all the shared with you things and then also you have the uh, different look for photos. So if somebody sends several photos at once, they'll kind of come up in like a little uh, stacked view. And you can also easily save photos now instead of having to tap on it and then hit the share button and then hit save photo. There's now a little button next to the photos that allow you to save them very easily. So those two big changes in messages and FaceTime are now here on your Mac. Next up here, let's talk about Safari. So we're now on Safari version 15 here in macOS Monterey. And this brings all the changes, of course, we saw on iOS as well. So you now have the compact tab bar. So your tabs are much more compact. You also have the tab groups that you can set up if you would like. And then we also have the new privacy protections and you also have your shared with you that will now appear here in Safari. And then of course Safari will now automatically use HTTPS instead of just HTTP. So yeah, again, more changes from iOS now making an appearance here on your Mac. Yet another change here is focus. So you now have your focus uh, things here that you can access on your Mac. All you got to do is head over to your system preferences. You can go to your notifications and focus section and you can then hit the focus tab all of your different focuses right here. And you can add them, create them, edit them. And again these are shared across all of your devices. So uh, for example my do not disturb setting it's exactly the same on every device and if you turn a focus on one device it will automatically turn on on all of the other ones. So you can also have status messages uh, for others trying to contact you and all sorts of good stuff. So you now have your focus will be enabled on your Mac as well. Speaking of notifications, you now have the new look for them right here. So they look kind of like they do on iOS now, more rounded. Uh, you also bring the time sensitive notifications uh, here to your Mac now as well. The Notes app features several changes like you have on iOS, so you have the tags, activity view, mention, highlights, and then your custom smart folders. But now on the Mac you also have the quick note that you can access too. So this is a feature that they brought to iPadOS, but now you can just go down here in the bottom right corner and click and it will bring up a quick note uh, for you so you can quickly type something in and then save it into your notes app. So that's pretty cool that they have brought that here on the Mac. Another thing here in Monterey is the universal control. Now this is obviously Monterey specific, but this is gonna allow you to use your keyboard, mouse, and trackpad across your Mac and your iPad. So literally you can just have a single keyboard mouse and work between devices. It's really gonna be something cool to see, but it is not yet out yet. Uh, but it should be out later this year, but you're literally going to be able to just combine your devices, which is going to be really cool. You can drag and drop content, move windows around. There's no setup whatsoever. You literally just put the devices near each other 
and it'll work. So it's going to be pretty cool to see that once it comes out later this year. Next thing here, which is something that should have been on Mac for quite some time, but you now have the ability to airplay to your Mac. So you can send content to your Mac from your phone, your iPad, or even another Mac. So you can view your videos, all that kind of stuff from another Apple device if they share the same Apple ID, of course. So you can mirror or extend the display from your iPhone or your iPad. You can send it wired or wirelessly, so you can still hook it up to a wired connection if you would like. You can even use the AirPlay 2 as a speaker, so your Mac can function as a third-party speaker, so you can play music or podcasts to it. So that's pretty cool. And I'll show you this just real quickly. Let me grab my phone here. If I go to my screen mirroring, instead of having my two Apple TVs, I now have an option for my Mac. And if I click on it, you can see that it automatically brings it up. And it's pretty quick too. So yeah, you can now mirror to your Mac from your other Apple devices, which is pretty nice. Next up here is shortcuts have now been brought to the Mac. So the shortcuts app that's been out for quite some time on iPad and iPhone, you now have it on your Mac. So if you wanna go find it, you just go to your launch pad, head over to the other folder, and you can see it right there. So it is pre-installed on your Mac, the shortcuts app, and you can access all of your shortcuts that you have on your other devices, as well as make specific ones, of course, for your Mac. So uh, you can have you know different things to run stuff from the finder, your menu bar, whatever. Uh, and all sorts of cool things like that. You can even run iPhone and iPad specific shortcuts on the Mac as well. And your gallery, of course, like I said, is synced across devices. These are all mine that I have when I have them on my iPhone. So yeah, uh, shortcuts are now available here on your Mac as well if you would like to automate some things. The Maps app has been updated on your Mac to feature everything that you now have on your iPhone. So you can see the whole globe, there's new driving features, transit features, you can see the new uh, details in certain cities, uh, all that 3D stuff, improved search, and all that good stuff here is now available on your Mac, if you even use the Maps app on your Mac. Let's talk about something kind of cool here, so you have new privacy features. So first thing here is if you take a look, you see the little orange dot right there next to my control center icon. And that just lets me know that it is recording right now. So obviously I'm screen recording. So you can see that it's letting me know that, hey, the microphone is being used on your computer. And if I were to click on my control center, you would see uh, what application was actually using that. And the cool thing is, is even if you go onto your lock screen, it will still show you that, and it'll even show you that your screen is being shared if it is being shared. So in this case, it thinks that it is. So you can see, if I go to my lock screen, you notice that we have the orange icon still, and you have your screen is being observed. So yeah, two new privacy features there. And since we're here on the lock screen, you can see that you now have Memoji that you can set as your login screen picture. So uh, your Memoji is now animated, and it's pretty funny too. Uh, if you get your password wrong, uh, your Memoji will actually react. So it's kind of funny. Uh, but yeah, animated Memoji stuff is now available on the lock screen as well. You also now have the iCloud Plus feature, so if you pay for an iCloud subscription plan, you get the iCloud Private Relay, you get the ability to hide your email, have a custom email domain, so all your uh, mail gets forwarded to a custom one, and then you also get the HomeKit Secure Video. Your Apple ID now has the ability to have a recovery contact and also a digital legacy program, so that way if you were to pass away, somebody else could access your iCloud account. If you use the Books app, you'll be happy to know that it has been completely redesigned here on your Mac, so it looks a whole lot different. I know I sure don't use this application, but if you do, you'll now have it be redesigned. Find My Game support for your live location for families and friends. You also have the Find My widget, so you can add that 
uh, to your widgets if you use them. And then also we have the Find My support for your AirPods. In the Mac Finder, you now have uh, the shortcuts, of course, that you can use in there. Uh, different copy enhancements, so there's kind of like a new loading thing that lets you kind of know more accurately how much time is remaining. If you're copying something, you now have the ability to press the Option key to be able to see a folder path, and there is also an iCloud collaboration folder. Here's a few other cool things that they've kind of added in, so to kind of help your Mac experience. So if you go to System Preferences and you click up here, you now have the ability to erase all content and settings. I'm so glad they finally added that. That's going to make it so much easier instead of the old way that you had to restore your Mac to factory settings. So you literally just click on that now. And as long as your Mac is pretty recent with the Apple Silicon or the T2 chip, then you can instantly erase all the content and settings and restore your computer to factory settings. Also, we have a low power mode, which Apple has finally brought to every device now. They put it on the iPad. Now they got it on the Mac. So if you want to access low power mode, you can go into your battery settings and you can go into battery and you can see right there that it says low power mode. So it'll work, I imagine, just like it will on your other devices, reduce energy usage and operate more quietly, kind of just slow everything down to conserve battery power. And I'm not sure yet, and but I'm probably guessing that when your battery gets to 20% or so, you'll get a pop-up that'll allow you to easily access it instead of having to go through the settings and find it. And then the final thing here is something really cool. Uh, if we take a window, so I'll just use iMovie for example. So while we wait for iMovie to open, we now have automatic window resizing. So your windows now will resize to fit the new display as you move them around. So if you have multiple monitors, or even if you're using the uh, new universal control feature or sidecar, it will automatically resize the window to fit the display. So if iMovie opens up, okay, so iMovie's open here. You can see uh, that it is fitting this window right here. I'm gonna move it up here to this other window, or excuse me, this other display. You guys can't see that, but what it just did is it actually filled it up to the part that I, or I guess I should say the size that I had it to when it was on the other display. And just to show you, I'll move it back down and you can see how much bigger the window is right now. So watch what happens when I let go. It resizes and all I have to do is drag it back over and now it's the size of this window again. So that is a super handy little feature there. I'm so glad they added that in there. Your passwords can now be accessed in system preferences. So no longer on your Mac do you have to go into Safari, then go to Preferences, then go to Passwords, you can now access them right here in System Preferences. So that's very nice. And of course, we now have the built-in authenticator, so you can generate 2FA codes here in your Password Manager as well. And then also, you can import and export your passwords, you can do the iCloud Passwords extension on Windows devices, so if you have Microsoft Edge, you can put the extension into there and you can manage your passwords on Windows. So that's pretty cool. The Photos app has a lot of new improvements. So they've redesigned all the memory related features. So they're completely different. Just like on your iPhone, you have the shared with you photos will appear in your sidebar. So that's going to be pretty nice as well. Your iCloud Photos library, if you use it, will be much faster on the initial syncing process. And then finally, let's just talk about a few design changes here and there. So overall, the design, it looks extremely similar to Big Sur. I can't really find too much that is different here. Uh, the dock looks exactly the same. Your notifications are probably the only thing that looks different, I would say. Uh, but then let's talk about the wallpapers and stuff. So if we go into there, you can see that we have, well, actually, let's just talk about screensavers first. So there's two new screensavers. There's a new Monterey screensaver, 
which is kind of just an animated background of the Monterey wallpaper so we can take a quick look at that so it's just a little animation so it's pretty cool a nice little screensaver there if you want to change things up and then we also have the hello screensaver so if you guys remember this was exclusive to the 24 inch iMac but now they have added it in for all of your devices so no matter what Mac you have you can now access the hello screensaver and you don't have to go through the tricks that I showed in one of my previous videos about how to enable it on your Mac so it's now there for you which is really cool and if we head over to our desktop we can see the new wallpapers here so the first one of course is the Monterey graphic so that's the one I'm rocking right now it is a dynamic wallpaper and there are the light and dark modes of course that you can access for that one but if we scroll down again we have the colored wallpapers here so these are the hello ones right here these were exclusive again to the 24 inch iMac but they have now brought them here on all devices so that's pretty cool so if you wanted to try out some of those hello wallpapers well they are now available for you and then I'm pretty sure that these wallpapers were added in too I know they were probably weren't these like 16 inch MacBook Pro specific ones or something like that I'm not really sure and then we also have these right here I believe those were also MacBook Pro specific I don't remember those being here so that's why I'm mentioning them but anyways guys that's pretty much it uh, there's a whole lot of new stuff here I tried to cover everything possible really what they've done is it's kind of like just an improvement of Big Sur everything basically design wise is the same you know but they've added a ton of features from iOS and iPadOS like all the share play stuff FaceTime changes message changes all that stuff just to kind of get it in line with the iOS version so yeah guys that's macOS 12 Monterey let me know what feature you like the best in the comments down below but right now that's all I got for you guys thanks for watching the channel as always and I'll catch you all in the next video.